Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series as we learn to use the program GIMP to create scroll saw portrait patterns. Uh, you could find this lesson and other lessons over at scrollsawvillage.com. Uh, look for the Village University Forum and there you'll find additional lessons as well as this video, some uh, printed out or uh, written out instructions additional source material, and of course classroom discussion where you could get all of your questions answered. So we invite you to swing on by and uh, join us. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, this is going to be lesson four. Uh, we're going to be setting up our work area and this is going to be the first time we're going to be working with an image. And uh, we're just going to kind of get it ready so that uh, next week when uh, we really roll up our sleeves and start getting into the uh, into the business of creating scroll saw patterns uh, we have everything kind of lined up and ready to go so this uh, this lesson will go pretty smoothly and uh, pretty quickly so I guess the very first thing we got to come up with is an image that we're all going to work with and uh, one of the things I wanted to do is obviously a portrait of a person and uh, really the best candidate for a portrait is uh, some sort of celebrity and uh, the tricky thing about celebrities is the people that take their pictures often want money for their photographs. So it's a little hard to find public domain or royalty free or even um, uh, limited copyright um, images out there on the internet. But I was able to track down one uh, from our good friend Mr. William Shatner. That's right, Captain Kirk himself. So this image is from Wiki Commons, uh, Wikimedia Commons. Uh, it's a really great website where you could uh, look for uh, images. And uh, one, one thing that's really nice about this is that it will actually tell you the licensing terms of whichever image that you're looking for, whether or not it's public domain or copyrighted, but with uh, used with permission, or if it's um, like a Creative Commons license or what have you. Now this holds uh, most uh, images that is used by the Wikipedia project and uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. So we got this uh, really nice picture of uh, William Shatner and if we scroll down you see the license information and it tells us that this license is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike which basically means that you're able to freely share and make derivative works under the conditions that you appropriately attribute it or give credit and that you distribute it un under the identical license that you got it from. So basically uh, we're allowed to use this image as long as uh, we release our pattern underneath uh, the Creative Commons uh, attributes license. So this particular photograph was taken by Jerry Avenime. I'm probably pronouncing his uh, name completely wrong, but uh, thanks to Jerry, uh, he has donated this photo to the Wikimedia Commons and has allowed us to make patterns from it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just go and click this and it's going to give us a full resolution picture. And granted, uh, even though I preached so much about having a high resolution picture, this one actually might work okay because it does have really nice color balance. Uh, the shadows are real nice. Uh, the skin tones are even and uh, the lighting in general is going to be real nice. So I have a feeling that we're actually going to be able to pull a really nice pattern from this. And uh, I just wanted to find a nice image that uh, everybody should have success with. And uh, I think this will fit the build just right. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to save this image as and I'm going to save it to my desktop. So I'm just click save and it is saved. So let's pop over to GIMP and close up this window. So now we have our default window. Okay so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up those that picture we just downloaded. So I'm going to come up to file, open and we'll find a picture that we just downloaded, William Shatner. I'm going to click open and what that does is open our, our picture in GIMP as we would expect. Uh, now we're not actually going to work with this particular picture right now because uh, it's really not the right size. Uh, in fact let's go ahead and take a look at the size. I'm going to come up to image 
canvas size and as you can see it's 250 pixels by 340 pixels uh, let's see what it is in inches it's three and a half inches by about four and three quarter inches which is much too small for a squirrel saw portrait pattern I personally like to work at uh, 8 inches by 10 inches mostly because it's easy to find a pat or a frame for so we're going to create a brand new document that is uh, 8 inches by 10 inches so I'm going to come up to file new and it creates this nice little dialog box now right up here are some templates that we could choose but uh, as you can see we don't see anything that says 8 inches by 10 inches so we're going to have to create a custom document size so uh, right over here we could do that with the width and the height. Let's switch that over to inches. So let's make it 8 inches wide, 10 inches tall, and uh, let's go ahead and click the advanced options because what we're going to want to do is change the uh, pixels per inch, the uh, X resolution and the Y resolution. By default it goes back to 72 pixels per inch and uh, that's really much too small you can't get a whole lot of detail in that so I like to change that to 150 pixels now there's a couple of reasons a uh, few reasons that I do 150 pixels uh, 72 like I said is just much too small it's really hard to get the detail in there uh, your other option uh, a lot of people like to work at 300 pixels which is real nice but that's probably a little bit overkill as far as detail is concerned so I find 150 really works well for me and one thing that's nice about 150 pixels is that I happen to know that a, uh, a uh, number three brush is the same width as a typical scroll saw kerf of the blade you know and a, a number five brush is about the width of the kerf of a spiral blade and uh, that kind of gives me a nice point of reference so I kind of know exactly uh, how detailed things are getting or not detailed they're getting uh, based upon the size of the brush and we'll talk about brushes a little bit later but uh, that's the reason why I like to use 150. The color space, we're always going to be using RGB, so go ahead and keep it at RGB. Uh, we have the fill width. Uh, let's just put the background as white. Uh, that works really well. I like that. So, And I'm going to click OK. And there's our brand new document. So I'm going to pull this off over to the side a little bit. And then I have William Shatner. I'm going to pull him off so we can see both screens at the same time. Now this is our brand new document and uh, like I said it is 8 inches by 10 inches which is really nice because we could find frames really easy. I'm going to expand this out because I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to do next is um, it is nice to have an 8 by 10 but when you have a frame you're going to have a little bit of overlap with the frame. Uh, it's going to take up a little bit of space into your image and uh, so we got to kind of account for an, a, mar a margin of some sort and um, so we need like a little bit of margin to add around this and what we're going to do is we're going to add some guidelines now as you noticed uh, up here and down to the left here are rulers uh, these are in inches you could tell because this little drop down here says it's in inches and um, if you look at my cursor in the lower left hand corner you can see my coordinates also displayed in inches so right now I am about uh, oh, four inches for, uh, to the center and about two inches from the top so we, we're going to keep an eye on those numbers and what we're going to do is we're going to drag over some guidelines now guidelines all you got to do is click into the ruler and drag out and you can kind of see this little line that's coming out and we could place these anywhere we want now I'm gonna just drop right in the center because we're gonna look at this real quick now these guidelines don't actually show up when you print they're just mostly they're only for reference so you could really put as many guidelines as you want in an image or as few or put them exactly where you want them or remove them all together uh, these are just reference lines for laying out your image. 
Now, if you don't want this image or this uh, guideline anymore, just hover over the top of it and it will kind of turn this uh, pinkish red color and just click and drag over into the uh, uh, into the rulers and uh, it'll disappear on you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a border or a uh, margin of about a quarter inch all around, all the way around the uh, frame or this uh, eight by ten image. So I'm going to drag one over, and I'm going to keep an eye on the lower left hand corner. As you can see, uh, right there is about 0.24 inches, which is close enough to a quarter inch for me. And I'm going to drag another guideline over to the other side, and I want this at 7.75 or as close as we could get. 7.74 works for me. I'm going to do the same thing for the top. I'm going to drag one down and I want that at a quarter of an inch. Uh, 0.24 works. And again I'm going to pull this down to about 9.75. Right there. 9.74 works for me. So I didn't take because it was off screen. Let me zoom out. I'm going to hit the minus key. That zooms out. I'm going to go ahead and lay down that uh, that guideline once again. So 9.75, 9.76, that's fine. Okay, there we go. Now we have our guidelines. And uh, these will help in uh, deciding where our margins are and uh, how large to make our picture. So let's come back over here to William Shatner. There's our picture there. and I'm going to go ahead and click on his image and uh, I'm going to pull over this layers palette. Remember last time we were talking about the layers dockable dialog and uh, right here on the bottom it says background. This is the um, this is the image that uh, we just opened so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to click uh, control C for copy and what that's going to do is this is going to copy it into my clipboard and I'm going to come over here to my brand new document and make that window active. I'm going to put control V, which is paste. And as you can see, it drops our little picture of William Shatner right in the center. So I'm going to pull the layers palette over and uh, let's uh, make our document full screen once again. And what we're going to have to do now is make uh, William Shatner fill up this little area in here so that uh, it's large enough to fill our workspace but uh, not large enough to go over our margins. So to do that we got to go back to our toolbox and we're looking at various tools here and we want the scale tool. It's this one here. Uh, Shift T is the default uh, shortcut key if you're looking for it uh, or you may have reassigned it if you decided to change your shortcut keys last time. But we're going to select the scale tool and uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on William Shatner and it's going to pop up this little dialog box. And um, we could uh, type in numbers if we so choose or we could uh, actually do it over here. Now if I grab one of these little corner nodes and I pull it, you can see that I can really change the way he looks. I can make him really skinny or really thin and fat. You know, it, what this is doing is it's changing the aspect ratio. What we want to do is keep uh, the same percentage of enlargement on the x-axis as it is on the y-axis. So I'm going to click reset here. And an easy way to do that is if you hold down the control key, it will constrain the aspect ratio. Now you could also do it in this dialog box here by clicking this little chain. If you click that little chain, that too will constrain the uh, aspect ratio. So I'm going to pull the scale off to the side a little bit just so we have a little bit of room so we can see. I'm going to pull the toolbox off as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and scale this image so that it, uh, oh, I don't know, right about here so it kind of lines up with our guideline. I'm going to move this one over so the shoulder ends up with this guideline as well. The top of his head is going to be on the top of this guideline and I'm not too terribly concerned about his shirt because really that's just not very important information or detail at all. Uh, so I'll just probably just crop that off and uh, erase that altogether. 
So once we kind of find out the size of our image that we would like, let's bring back the scale button again. Uh, once we're happy with it, we just hit the little scale button. And what that does is it uh, basically uh, tells the computer this is really what you want. So, and I think that looks pretty darn good. So we have our portrait nicely positioned in the frame. So next time uh, we'll be able to really dig in and uh, start working on our pattern. Uh, like I said, this is kind of an easy uh, lesson, uh, but uh, give it a try. Uh, create uh, new documents, create 8x10 portraits, and rescale images, and uh, throw in some guidelines and just play around with that a little bit. And uh, next week we're going to go ahead and dig in and uh, we're going to create our base pattern. We're going to manipulate this image with some filters to get um, to really just kind of get us on our way. And then uh, we'll really start getting into the pattern making. So make sure you join us next week. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to uh, stop by the forums and ask in there, and I'll be glad to answer them. And also check out any additional source material, including this picture where you could download to your own computer so you could be working on the same image as the rest of us. So with that said, uh, I think we're done. Uh, so until next time, happy scrolling.